Hello, and welcome to Dave's Delightful Dishes. As always, I'm Dave, and it is such a delight to have you here visiting me today in my kitchen. And today we're gonna to do something out of my freezer. I found out that I, as I'm cleaning out my freezer, that I had some baby back ribs that needed to be cooked. And rather than doing my same old, same old recipe with them, I thought I'd try something a little different. Let's check it out. So with this rack of baby back ribs, what I decided to do is, you know, those, uh, when you go to a Chinese restaurant, their, uh, their version of spare ribs that are that really sweet and saucy kind of reddish, uh, you know, kind of reddish rib. We're going to make that ourselves. I checked it out. It's not all that difficult and it's uh, surprisingly quick. So we're going to give it a shot. So obviously you need ribs and then you need a bunch of spices. So what we've got to do is we've got to start off by making our marinade. Got a big bowl and I've got mirin or shuzhang wine if you can get it. But mirin is a lot more common. This is uh, sesame oil. All the uh, volumes will be in the description below. Chinese five spice powder. White pepper. About three cloves of garlic minced. Salt, soy sauce, a quarter cup of sugar, and now these are the two that I need my rubber spatula for. This is hoisin sauce, and molasses. And molasses is just a mess. It's a messy product, but is what it is. It brings a rich flavor. And then finally, you notice that it's bright red when you see it at the, at the Chinese restaurant. That's because they're actually using a little bit of food dye. Now I'm going to put just like one drop in. You can skip this completely if you uh, want to have less food coloring in your life, but I want to kind of give it that color. So I'm going to give it at least one drop, maybe two drops. There we go. And we got to mix all this together and it's going to make like a paste. And I'll bring this up kind of close to you. As you can see, it makes a thick paste and the smell smells like a Chinese restaurant. Wonderful. So I'm going to reserve using my sugar bowl about a third of this. So about that much. Now, I find the best way to use to apply a rub is with your hands, but that is going to be a really messy rub, especially with the food dye. So time to rubber glove up. And because all this is going to go directly in the sink as soon as I'm done rubbing it, <laughs> you still get some everywhere. And I'm going to really kind of work this in. And then I'm going to have to wipe my countertop after I'm done with this, but that's okay. Because this is something you want to do at least a couple hours in advance. Uh, and ideally you do this night, you, know, you rub this up the night before, and then you put this in your fridge and just let it marinate. But I'm going to go probably about seven hours today. This is where it's still pretty early in the morning. But if you uh, aren't home all day like I am, you know, just do it the night before. It'll be ready for you when you get home because the actual cooking time is only about an hour. All right. Now that I got some good solid coverage and I've made as much of a mess of my countertop as I can. <laughs> I'll be cleaning up once I turn the camera off. This is now going to go in a plastic bag and go into the refrigerator for 
as many hours as you like, uh, preferably overnight, but at least two. But I'm going to go about six. All right, so I will see you guys this evening for the cooking. Okay, so real time here. It's been seven hours that this has been marinating. Like I said, if you uh, want, you can let it go overnight as well, and that'll only increase the flavor. But I like it. I like the idea of it being in there for a while uh, versus the uh, two hours minimum. The more you put it in, the longer it's uh, the better. The, you know, the better the flavors are going to soak in. So I have a uh, cooking, you know, like a, a roasting pan with a rack, which I've got up. So that'll keep this meat up off the bottom of the pan. You can also use a baking sheet with like a, with a rack. And I'm going to lay these two racks out, or these two half racks of ribs out. And let's not waste the beautiful juice. <laughs> Wet my hands a little bit. And then I have one cup of water, which I'm pouring down into the bottom of this pan. So this is going to go into a 400 degree oven for 30 minutes. And then we'll do a little bit of basting. So going in the oven, see you back when it's time to baste. All right, 30 minutes have elapsed. This is coming along really nicely. And now it is time to take that reserved marinade, as sticky as it is because of all the molasses. And we're going to coat the top. Just paint it on real good. Now, if you want this to be extra red, you just got to add more food coloring. Like, that's what most of the uh, Chinese restaurants are doing, I believe, because of how red it gets. But um, for me, I don't feel the need for a bunch of excess food coloring. But it's for, you know, it's for optics. If you want it to be really bright, go ahead and add it. Another, uh, I only put two drops in here. You could do quite a bit more if you want. All right. Got this almost coated. Trying to get all the little nooks and crannies. Because now... There we go. This is going to go back in the oven for another 30 minutes, continuing at 400 degrees. And then we'll see what it looks like when it's done. Look at those. That's the second 30 minutes. That's a, it's an hour total. But you're only like actually handling the meat at this point for a couple minutes at each clip. But now that it's out and that char looks wonderful, what we're going to do is we're going to let this sit and just rest for about five minutes. And, you know, if it, if it cools down a little bit faster, that's fine. But you don't want to cut it now and have all the juices run out of it. So just let it rest. Give it a couple minutes. And then we'll see you back at the workstation where we're going to cut it up and plate it. All right. These ribs are ready to go. So let me get them out. And we're going to go ahead and get them a slice. I like going from this side when I'm cutting. Not for any good reason other than I can more easily see the rib bones. So I'm going to get a better cut. And... The cleaver helps quite a bit because I get a little bit of weight behind it. And just like that, look at these ribs. Oh, and they smell so good too. So what I'm going to do is I made some fried rice and I'll link them in the description, the episode from a while back when I made fried rice. So you can do it too. Or you can just have these as a side. You can have them as party food. They can be part of a main, which is what they'll be tonight for us. But I'm going to lay these out on this fried rice. And you know my old adage, if you wash your hands, you can touch your food. So just keep those hands clean. Uh, here's the meatier side of the rack. Come on. Got a knuckle there. There we go. All right. And what a plate this is going to be. Let me get my cutting board out of the way. Get my hands a little wipey wipey. Get that guy just there. And then I've got some 
uh, green onion that I'm just going to kind of sprinkle around for look. And if you wanted to have a dipping sauce for this, just get some of that hoisin sauce that we could that we use in the uh, in the recipe and have that on the side so people want to dip, they can add that. But one hour, well, plus the time for marinating, but you do that ahead of time. So one hour is cooking, and look at this delightful dish. And this is something you can make at home nice and easy yourself. Give it a try. Use it for your next party or get together. Your, your, uh, your guests will definitely thank you. So if you uh, haven't already, please hit like and subscribe. And uh, maybe ring that bell so that every time I put one of my videos up, you'll get an alert. And you can check me out on my uh, Facebook page for Dave's Delightful Dishes, which includes my Spreadshirt app and, as well as my Instagram. So from all those, you can see different things that are going on and you can contact me. Let me know what's going on. Give me challenges. And uh, basically, I hope to hear back from you guys because the feedback I get from you is a large part of how I make this show work. But, but until then, I'll see you at the next recipe.